Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Father Ted Talks. Today, I wanted to speak a little bit about the cross, uh, and more specifically, the idea that in our modern society, the cross is not exactly uh, the most uh, popular uh, symbol to speak about. Now, you're going to say, that's very strange, Father. The cross is at the center of our faith. You know, we wear it. We wear it around our necks. We have it in the church everywhere. We have it in our homes. We do our cross every day, hopefully as Orthodox Christians. You know, it is the symbol, the most recognizable symbol of the Christian faith. How can you say that the cross is not so popular? But when we really think about it, you know, um, we've taken a symbol, at least the, the Christian church has taken a symbol. Of course, Christ took this symbol, which in the in before the time of Christ was a symbol of fear, of death, of you know torture because this was the the most torturous and most horrible way to be uh, as, you know killed uh, by the Roman uh, Empire. Uh, it was reserved only for the worst people, and Christ takes this horrific symbol of torture and he turns it into a symbol of life because it is through this torturous symbol that Christ works to the miracle of salvation and is resurrected on the third day after his crucifixion. And so we have this symbol. Now, we understand all these things as Christians, and it's very normal that we would have the symbol of the cross. However, when we think about what it means for us to wear a cross and to really, really internalize the symbol of the cross, we have to think about Christ's great commandment when he says, whoever would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Now, this is very, very difficult. When you think about it, how often do we really hear this term or this phrase? Whoever would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Uh, how often do we see this or hear this when we are trying to get people to become Christians? Not very often because it's not exactly a slogan that you can put on a poster, right? It's not exactly something that, you know, uh, you use as an advertisement, you know? Hey, come become an Orthodox Christian and die. Come become an Orthodox Christian and be willing to sacrifice for God and for your fellow human beings. Come and become an Orthodox Christian and, you know, you can count on a life of difficulty, of sometimes persecution, of, you know, not always getting what you want. You know, come and have that life because it will give you salvation. This is not something that is very, very popular in today's day and age. And this is why if you really, really pay attention in most Christian denominations today, not all, but especially more of the evangelical Protestant, uh, you know, elk, or uh, if you see especially, you know, TV preachers and, you know, mega churches and things like that, where you see them online or on TV, you will never hear sermons about the cross. Rarely will you ever hear a sermon about the cross because it is a scandal, as the Apostle Paul says. You know, we preach Christ crucified, which is a stumbling block to the Jews and a scandal for the Greeks, right? Um, and so, you know, uh, this idea that Christ calls us to suffering, Christ calls us to martyrdom, Christ calls us to Golgotha, to be crucified with him, is not something that is so popular. And so many Christian denominations, which are very, very big and bring in a lot of people, uh, they focus on what is called the prosperity gospel, which is this idea, which of course the Orthodox do not ascribe to, that you know if you follow God and if you believe in Jesus and you do all the right things, then God will will help you prosper and he will bless you with you know the big house on the hill and the expensive car and success in your business and money and wealth and health and all these things. And if we really pay attention to what Christ says in the Gospels, this type of theology is demonic. It is the antithesis of what Christ says. Christ over and over again says, you know, uh, you know, do not think that I came to bring peace. I did not bring to bring peace, but a sword. You know, brother will rise up against brother and father will betray the son and vice versa. And in families, you know, three, three will be against two and two against three. There will be splitting of homes and, and families for my sake and for the gospels, right? And they will persecute you and they will throw you in prison and they will do all these things to you. Even the time will come when those who kill you will think they're offering service and praise to God. So these things are not prosperity. These are, are, are the truths of being a true follower of Christ, that we have to have the willingness to deny ourselves, you know, to deny our own selfish desires, to pick up our cross, to shoulder our cross, to shoulder the weight of the sin of the world, and to follow Christ. And of course, to follow Christ, as we all know, because we go through Great Lent every year and we go through Holy Week, is to follow him to Golgotha, to follow him to his passion, to follow him to crucifixion. And then, of course, only after the crucifixion happens can the joy of the resurrection come. Only after the struggle does the reward come. And so to be a true Christian is to truly love Christ to the point where 
we are willing to sacrifice everything for him. And this is something that is very, very difficult to preach. It is not something that we can simply put on a poster. It is not something that you can really kind of entice people to, to do and to take up by a very, you know, well-designed website or a really well-crafted program or a really, you know, well-designed uh, YouTube channel. Uh, all these things are irrelevant when it comes to the cross, right? The cross is the most important thing. And the only way that we can, you know, uh, bring people towards Christ and towards his cross is by example, you know, by inspiration. You know, we always say that the Orthodox Church does not proselytize. It does not bring people in, convert people by pamphlets or by preaching. Rather, it brings people in by example, by attraction. You know, people are inspired by these great saints, by these people who live the life of Christ, who show this great love and this great sacrifice for their fellow human beings because they are inspired by Christ on the cross. And this is what we are called to do. It is a difficult journey. It is one that is going to kind of, you know, shatter our expectations. It's going to shatter our, 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 our wants and our likes and our, our needs. And it is, offers us only salvation. It is a difficult road. And yet, though, it is the most beautiful road that anyone could ever take. And so this is something that we really have to kind of think about when we do our cross, when we wear a cross, when we see the cross, when we venerate it, when we do all these things, we should really think about what does that really mean and try to renew our faith every day and try to have that strength to do what is right, even in the face of persecution, to do what is right, even in the face of difficulty, in, even in the face of ridicule, even in the face of being ostracized from our social groups or from modern society. All these things will happen to us if we are faithful Orthodox Christians, but the only important thing is that God sees and God will reward us in secret. And of course, there is the body of Christ, which is the church. We are, we are all brothers and sisters to give each other hope, to give each other support, and to give each other um, you know, the, the energy and the courage to keep going in this beautiful journey that is called life. So that is all I want to say a little bit about the cross today, since a lot of people speak about and ask me about it, what, it mean, what does it mean for us, and what does it truly mean to be a Christian in this world. It is a difficult journey, but it is also one of the most beautiful journeys anyone can ever take. Till next time, take care and God bless. This is Father Ted for Father Ted Talks. Thank you.